basically I watched as this young woman destroyed my son's heart. So this is, I'm, I'm putting this video out here for men, young guys, or just guys that you don't have much experience with love and with relationships. And so you're vulnerable. You could definitely potentially, potentially be vulnerable to this type of woman. I want to try to, I want to try to um, give you this persona so that when you see it, that you don't fall prey, run the other way. My mother was this type of woman and she destroyed my father's heart. Actually, I, I tell their whole story. Um, I will attach that video to, to the end of this one. Um, you can click on it and hear their story. But yes, this, this woman is a type, okay, that you, you need to watch out for because she, when you are raised to love people, when you're raised in a, in a good, healthy home, right? Or maybe not even in a good, healthy home, but you're raised with good morals and good principles. And whether you, you had a lot or you didn't have a lot, if you had people that cared about you and y'all stuck together, you know, um, and took care of each other when you needed each other, then you're going to have a good heart. And you'll meet females, you'll meet women in the world. You go to school, you go to college, you go to work, you go to the grocery store, you go anywhere in life, you're gonna meet women, all kinds of women. There are all kinds of women out there. I'm just trying to warn you against this one specific type. This type of woman has had a troubled life. She's got all these hardships from her life. Maybe her family treated her bad. Maybe she grew up in foster care. Maybe uh, she was abused some kind of way. Um, Maybe she had a regular household, but she felt like nobody loved her uh, or nobody cared about her. She's got a sob story, okay? She's got tragedy um, in her past that she has not healed from. She'll tell you the story and it will be very sad and you'll be like, Oh my God, nobody should have ever had to have gone through that. I feel terrible for you. I just want to wrap my arms around you and protect you. You know, I want to show you that life can be so much better if you have people, if you have somebody that loves you in your life. Okay, that's what you're going to be thinking. And she's going to be like, yes, I just want somebody to love me. Okay. <laughs> And she's not joking. She She's not joking. That's what she wants. She wants somebody to love her. But the problem is she doesn't know what love is. She will take your kindness for weakness. There's nothing wrong with having a troubled past. Okay, plenty of us, myself included, come from a dysfunctional family, a, a history of different kinds of abuse, um, all kinds of things 
happen to people. Everybody has a past. The differentiator is how you deal with it, how you deal with your past. If this person has gone to therapy, if they got counseling, if they did uh, self-hypnosis, if they do meditation, if they, you know, if they uh, did something and not for a short amount of time. If it was a lot of abuse, it needs a lot of attention, right? Over time, if it took years for it to happen, it's going to take a long time to clear it out, right? Doesn't happen overnight. But the point is, there's a difference between people that have gone through trauma and have gotten um, have, have gotten the treatment that they needed to overcome that and people who have gone through trauma and they just survived. They didn't get any treatment. They haven't been to any counseling. They haven't taken it. You know, uh, they haven't, they don't do any kind of hypnotherapy, uh, no kind of reprogramming of the subconscious mind, um, no kind of meditation or anything like that. Like they just keep on keeping on and doing the best that they can every day. That person is dangerous. That person is dangerous because they have emotional disfiguration. You know, just like if you get burned on half your body, half your body's going to be disfigured. Well, your soul, your emotions, your your mind gets disfigured from uh trauma that has not healed, right? Emotional disfiguration they are going through life emotionally disfigured now they can dress themselves up put on you know have not one hair out of place be absolutely gorgeous but on the inside their heart is rotten their heart is corrupted their heart is contaminated their heart is diseased they don't know it. They don't know it. They think they fine. They think that is, you know, because they're not in that same situation anymore, uh, that they're fine. But they have no idea that them not dealing with their trauma causes them to behave in a distorted way when they get into future relationships. And then that's where you come in. You figure you're not going to treat them the way that person treated them. You know, you're not going to do the things that uh, happen to them. You're not going to do those things. So you're not going to have a problem, right? Wrong. Wrong. Let me tell you what happens with these women. They don't know how to love. They go through life in this survival. They, they're, they're like a wounded animal right? They're like a wounded animal and uh, they're just like, they look at life, even, even when they get to a good place and they have a good person with them, behind them, loving them, and they have money and all that kind of stuff. They can't get out of this survival mode. They always think that something is going to happen to mess everything up or they're going to mess everything up or, you know, it's all going to be taken away or that you can't really love them. How can you love somebody like them uh, with all that happened to them or with all that they did? They can't believe that somebody like you would really love them. So they'll be doing all this stuff to protect them themselves, you know, like taking your money and putting it in a separate account or uh, they'll um, never fully invest their heart in you. They, they will never trust you uh, because they'll be scared because of what happened to them from their mother or what happened to them from their father or what happened to them from their brother or what happened to them from their uncle or what happened to them at school, what happened to them that one time at band camp, you know, all that emotional damage. It will come up. Do you understand me? It will come up. And you mess around and you fall in love with one of these women. 
And then you have children with her. And she is messed up in her emotions. She is messed up in her mind. She has some messed up ways that you overlook because you, you want to help make her better. You, you're hoping that if you do this and if you provide a good environment for her and if you provide a, a, a safe environment for her, if you give her all the things she's never had before, if you spoil her, if you love her like she's never been loved before, uh, if you do all these things, then natural cycle of life, you know, she's going to reciprocate that and just fall head over heels in love with you and get right on board with you. And, and she's going to give you all that back. No, baby. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. She's fucked up. And she don't think she needs to go get counseling. She don't have, she makes excuses, doesn't want to go to counseling. It makes excuses, doesn't want to do anything. No group therapy, no counseling, no um, no one-on-one -on -one therapy, no hypnotherapy, no meditation, uh, anything. You know, and, and, and even if a woman says, I'm sorry. If a woman says that uh, she's been traumatized and she's been through all this stuff and she um, is renewing her mind through the word of God and that God is healing her, you better run. Because I've been through trauma in my life, a lot of it. And I have leaned on God to help me to overcome the mental and emotional damage that I have suffered through all the trauma and through my relationship with God, God led me to therapy first. God led me to group therapy. He led me to counseling. He led me to reprogramming my subconscious mind. He led me to uh, self-hypnosis and hypnotherapy. He led me to meditation and all these, you know, healthy practices. And he, he explained to me, yes, I heard God speak to me that Brandy, it takes the spiritual and the natural working in tandem. Yes, you need the word of God. Yes, you need prayer. Yes, you need to bind those demons that have gotten on you, that have been able to take advantage of you. But then after that, you need therapy. You need emotional help. You need to do that natural work to heal yourself completely. Okay, so if a woman tells you that she's been through all of that stuff, but God healed her or, you know, God did it and she didn't need no counseling, you better run. You better run. Okay, because uh, she's she's not whole. She's not complete. She's not at all. She's deceiving herself because she doesn't feel like doing the work because it is a lot of work and a lot of times it's scary. You know, you don't want to think about those things that happen to you. You don't want to relive those things. You know, you don't want, you want to try to run from it and not think about it and, um, and, and don't want to deal with it. And some stuff is so horrific. It's terrible, you know, to have to deal with. But if you don't do that work, that natural work, then you are going to stay emotionally damaged and you're just going to keep on hurting people because hurting people hurt people and they might look fly they might look gorgeous they might look dynamic and and all that but you don't know how she is when she's by herself and there's nobody around applauding her every thing and she's just by herself feeling dirty because her stepdad used to do whatever to her or whatever. Um, yeah. So what happens is you get with these 
these women that are damaged and that have not taken the time to heal and you get them pregnant and you're thinking this is a great thing because she is so fine and you just want to be in her life forever and then when that baby comes and she starts doing really terrible things because she does not know how to love she might have had that baby just to hold on to you. You thinking you getting her pregnant so you can hold on to her. And her whole plan was just to hold on to you because you have provided security for her. You, you, you know, you've given her a home, you've given her a different, a new life. You know, there's not all of the, the chaos and the negativity that she was experiencing before. And so she's looking for a way to put her claws in you, but she doesn't know how to treat you. You don't hardly have no peace with this chick because she always got a problem with something. You know, uh, and it's always some crap out of her head. Ain't nobody thinking about that. Nobody is. I wasn't looking at that girl. That girl wasn't looking at me or that's my sister calling me and you tripping because, you know, I got a phone call from a, a female, you know, uh, just all kinds of ridiculous things set them off. Okay, so that's another indicator. You don't have a moment's peace with these kinds of women. Something's always wrong with them. You always have to be appeasing them. You always have to be showing them that they're more important to you than everybody else. And oh gosh, if you have an argument with them and you're like, and it starts getting out of hand, oh, and she definitely might put her hands on you. She definitely might put her hands on you. I'm just, I'm laying out the type. Should get in your face, want to argue, 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 argue. And the argue is pointless. She's uh, bringing up stuff from way back here that is not even relevant anymore. Uh, or she's just saying things to make you mad so she can win the argument. Um, but she'll get in your face. She'll just spiral out of control. Just arguing, 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 arguing. And then won't let you leave. You'll catch a domestic violence charge with these bitches. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Leave them alone. I don't care how good they look. I would not even touch the punani with a 10-foot pole. There is too many girls out here. There are too many girls out here. I don't care how good she looks. I don't care how fat the booty is or how thin the waist is or how long the hair is or how long the legs are. There are others out there. Save yourself some trouble and some heartache because that's all it is, okay? That's all it is. It's trouble and heartache. So they'll get in your face. They'll try to fight you. Um, and then when you try to leave, they'll, of course, they'll try to block you from leaving. And oh boy, then they'll turn the waterworks on. Everybody leaves me. Oh, why are you trying to leave me? Everybody leaves me. Try to make, playing the victim card. They start the arguments. Okay, they all they do is just pour gas all over the damn place. They just pour gas everywhere, just gas lighting, just all over the place. They start arguments. And then when you as a rational person, you know, because at first you fall for it, you know, because, oh, gosh, you know, I, I wasn't looking at that girl or, you know, this I, I had to work late. You know, my I, I really was at work like we share our locations. You saw I was at work. Yeah, but you could be messing with somebody at work. You got to get the work. Uh, you will, you know, doubt yourself for a second when they come with the bullshit. 
you'll doubt yourself for a second and and you'll entertain it you know and and you'll be trying to appease her but then after a while you gonna realize there's no appeasing this bitch you not she could argue with you all night long she could argue on cruise control that's what she does she argues okay about everything and wants to argue it down to the nth degree but there is no end of it because it was all bullshit in the first place so once your rational mind kicks in and you're like, wait a minute, this is this is craziness. I know I didn't do anything and we are sitting here having this big old loud, ugly argument. We done offended my family. They looking at me like I'm crazy because I got this crazy girl and they wondering what is wrong with her and why am I putting up with this, whatever. So then you'll, you'll be like, you know what? I'm not doing this. Uh, I'm leaving then she'll turn into the victim after she started it and after she kept it going poured gasoline all over it now she's the victim make you feel sorry for her and then she gonna want to have sex with you okay get you get you all tender-hearted and get you back into you know caring about her now now you're not leaving or whatever then she gonna you know top you off real good um, or, you know, turn into the little freak that you like, and then it's over with. And you, you just like, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, my son told me that he just kept on thinking that if he showed her true love and that he was loyal and that if he did you know, all the things that she wanted him to do that she would change. She would wake up and she would realize that he really loved her and she would stop all the madness. But what he didn't, he thought his love would be enough. Okay. And um, what I want all of you guys to know is it's not it's not trauma has to be dealt with and handled in a specific way it does not heal itself it stays in there and you can take yourself out of that situation and not see that person ever again um and go on about your life and you think that oh i don't live around my family members that did that to me anymore. So it, it doesn't affect me or it doesn't hurt me. You can go on and you won't be thinking about it. It's not going to hurt you because they're not in your face. You're not, you don't keep on, you know, um, uh, reliving it over and over and over. You going on about your life. But what you don't realize as an untreated trauma victim is that that trauma resurfaces that that emotional damage that emotional disfiguration it complicates other areas of your life it complicates other relationships and um and it messes you it messes you up if you haven't healed it so um what happened with my son he met this girl he was young, he was 18, and uh, he was graduating um, from aviation school. And she was, uh, she had just graduated high school and she was in foster care. She had been in foster care for the last three years. And her mother and her father was addicted to meth. And uh, she had lived her mother's sister had taken her and her little sister in and her aunt was very abusive and her aunt was a lawyer. And so she would use her knowledge, her legal knowledge to basically keep the girl and her sister captive 
she swindled their mother out of her inheritance and, you know, um, had she tricked the children's father out of um, their parental rights. And she was just a horrible, horrible person, really horrible person. It's scary that people like her are practicing law. Um, but anyway, so she was abused again by her aunt, uh, being extremely emotionally, verbally, um, and physically abusive because I think she was, um, she was starving them too, but she went through a lot. She went through a lot. And then just being in foster care, that's no, uh, that, that's nowhere for children to be. Uh, so she was phasing out of foster care because she was 18 and my son was graduating from aviation school and all the guys that she had ever uh, dealt with before my son, they didn't have anything going on. They were just uh, thugs. That's what she said. She said she only, only ever uh, dated thugs. And so when she met my son, she just latched on. Soon as she met him, she quit her job. That was an indicator right there. Um, and he had been lonely for some time because he had been in school um, and hadn't had a girlfriend. You know, he was young, his hormones raging. He was ready for love, you know, uh, or he thought he was ready for love. And she was pretty. She was really cute. And she came off real sweet, had a good head on her shoulders. You know, she knew how to talk that talk. That was another thing about her. God darn, that girl could lie. Ooh, she was a pathological liar. Dang. She lied. She, oh, she lied about everything, anything. And you wouldn't even catch it because it was so much. And it would be about little stuff, you know. But after knowing her for some years, and then she would forget the lies that she told. And, um and say something else, say another lie. And then I would, I started catching her and I was, anyway, that's a whole nother thing. So they got together and he was infatuated and wanted to have sex immediately. I told him, you know, don't have sex with that girl. Get to know her first. Of course, I'm a mother, so of course, that's going to be my advice. I wish, you know, he would stay celibate. But you can only control yourself in this life. You can't control anybody else. So anyway, um, had to have sex with her. I even bought him condoms. I was like, look, if you're going to have sex with her, at least protect yourself. Nope. Didn't use condoms. They even talked about it and thought it was funny. Let's have a baby. You know, 18 year olds, uh, a lot of times don't understand the repercussions of their actions because they just have no clue. They don't have any life experience. They don't know how, how deep the rabbit hole goes. They don't know how long lasting uh, some decisions are. So they started having sex. He quickly realized, though, that she wasn't a good person, that, you know, something was wrong. And uh, and he was starting to back away. Well, when he started to back away, she poured it all on. Of course, she wants to hold on to him. And so I guess the manipulation in the bedroom, you know, her making him feel sorry for her, telling him stories about this tragedy that happened to her, that tragic thing that happened to her, this terrible thing that happened to her, and will always, you know, have him feeling sorry for her and wanting to save her and all those things. And so next thing you know, she got pregnant. Soon as she got pregnant, she changed. He told me that 
she acted like he was his slave, uh, her slave or something. Like she, you know, she just got so demanding, so demanding and so entitled and her whole, you know, that's who she was. It came out, she felt comfortable enough to let her real self show because she felt like she had trapped him. And she did. But he let her. He was a willing participant. So anyway, the pregnancy was terrible. She wanted to fight and argue the whole pregnancy. She wound up having my grandson, my first grandson, um, like two months early. So he had to go into the NICU when he was born. And he's on the spectrum, nonverbal. And so since she acted so ugly during the pregnancy, after my grandson was born, my first grandson was born, um, my son again started entertaining the thought of leaving her. Um, well, he got a place. And um, of course she lived there. So when she had my grandson, they were together for some months and my son got to the point where he couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't take her attitude. He couldn't take all the fighting, all the, cause I, I didn't raise him like that. I, I'm not, I don't like to argue. I don't like to fuss. I, I'm i just not that kind of person. I don't like having a lot of uh, confusion uh, around me. I don't like having people that keep confusion around me. I don't really have a lot of people around me. Um, I just, I, I, I just, I don't like confusion. I, I don't like bull crap. I like peace, you know? I like home to be your haven. That's where you should feel comfortable. That's where you should feel safe. It's your place, your domain. You know, you got to fight out in this world. The last place you should have to fight is at home. So I just don't um, have that kind of environment, keep that kind of environment. So my son wasn't used to all that fighting. And he couldn't take it anymore and was about to leave. And again, she pours on the waterworks and all the stuff that happened to her. And everybody leaves me. She pours on the manipulation and tops him off real good, whatever. And boom, she's pregnant again. And again, soon as she's, you know, uh, good and pregnant again, the whole stinky attitude and all of that stuff comes back. And now she's even more like that because now she feels like she has solidified her place in the family now. You know, she got rights. <laughs> you know, she, she feels like she's up in there. So they have the second baby um, and she, her attitude and her behavior is so ugly, you know, and eventually my son gets to the point where he can't take it anymore. Um, and he, after the second child, he decides he wants to leave again. Oh no, no. This time she left thinking that she was, you know, pulling some kind of ultimatum. 
And he said, you know what? It's good. Just stay gone. I'll pay child support. And as soon as she realized that her tactic didn't work, she came right back and poured on the waterworks and the manipulation and all that and got pregnant again. So now I have three grandchildren and she's a horrible mother because she doesn't know what love is and she never really wanted any of her children. They were all uh, uh, safety measures uh, to secure a home for herself and to secure safety for herself so that she could be, keep on being taken care of by my son. So reading to them every night, no, they can't even get their teeth brushed. My granddaughter is five years old. And um, my the, the my son had to he my son was taking care of the children and her all their all the kids' lives, and then um, it just finally came to a head um, because he just really couldn't take it anymore, and he snapped, and um, she um, she wasn't living with with them. My son had a house and he had the children. And then um, I moved away, so I wasn't his support system anymore. So they had to lean on each other to take care of the children. So uh, like he would work and then she would watch the kids and then he would come home and then she would go to work and he would watch the kids. They was trading off like that. Well, one day, like I said, she wasn't living there it was his place, but one day she came, um, he got off work and got home and it was, you know, her turn to go to work. And, but this time she wanted to argue. She wanted to argue about something, had some kind of hair up her tail. And, uh, she wanted to argue, 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 argue. And, Eventually, my son got to the point where he was like, I don't have to put up with this crap. I'm leaving. And then she um, was, she basically, you know, was all over him trying to keep him from leaving. And um, he had to, you know, he was just trying to um, get her off of him. And she hit him. Uh and he hit her back and you know i don't condone um men hitting women but i also don't condone women hitting men you don't have no business you don't have any business putting your hands on a man because if he decides to put his hands on you you don't have nothing to say. You started it. You put your hands on him. You opened that door. And now, you know, that you don't learn that you're not a man and that he is much stronger than you and that he can hurt you very easily. Now you want to cry and 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 become a victim when you was Bucky Badass a second ago headbutting people because I, I've seen her do that, you know. He'd be trying to get away from her. And she would get in his face and headbutt him. And, you know, call him a punk because he wants to leave and all this kind of stuff. I'm telling y'all. These women like this. You need to, as soon as you see any of these signs that I have said. First of all, don't sleep with somebody you just met. Just don't do it. You know, um, it's just, you just open the door 
you just open the door to way too much, you know? And people always talk about women, how our body is a temple. Men, I don't understand why y'all don't think that your body is a temple too. Your seed, when you give your seed to a woman, can you imagine having a baby, giving a baby to a woman, and then she has control over that child and she turns out to not be a good woman. And then she has your child around people that will rape your child. She has people uh, uh, around your child that uh, they might be on drugs and they might leave a pill, drop a pill or something like that on the floor. And your child have an overdose do you understand how important it is for your seed to just not be spread all around out here? Do you understand that there's plenty of women out here that are degenerates? Okay? Degenerates. Low lives. Don't want anything good in life. Just want to have fun use whoever they can use to get whatever they want and will treat you like dog shit under their shoe. They'll think about you like dog shit under their shoe and treat you like that and take everything, everything from you. You'll be working hard and you thinking you going to buy her a car or put her in a house or take her shopping and this type of stuff. Because that's how you want to treat your woman and all that kind of stuff. And she'll just be gobbling it up, gobbling up. <clears throat> what else you got? That, ain't, that wasn't even good. Give me some more. That's the attitude. Do you, I don't care how fine a woman is. If her attitude is like that towards you, do you, would you want to be with that? Would you want something like that raising your children? There are very good women out here. There are very good girls out here. Guess where they are? They're at work. They're in college. You know, they got their head in a book, like an actual book. They're, they're out here pursuing their interests. They might have a thing for photography. They might have a thing for art. Uh, they might be athletic. They they might be into DJing and music. They might be a content creator. I mean, if you can't be so shy that you're scared to approach women except online or in a club or a bar. Get over that. I mean, if you speak to a young lady, hello, and then she just gives you some stank look, baby, that just saved you from... <laughs> that just if nothing else it saved you some time because she showed you immediately that she doesn't even have manners you know so ain't no need to get mad ain't no need to feel rejected be like oh i'm so sorry i hope you have a better day and just keep on walking and even if she changes up no oh, no wait now i thought you were somebody else no no that's okay i saw the real you right up front you know and just keep it moving you meet a woman hello and she's like hi how are you i'm fine oh man 
I love this grocery store. They always have the best produce or, you know, whatever. If y'all looking at the dairy, you know, just say something. And she's like, yeah, I know. Me and my husband come here all the time. Boom. Don't get mad. She just let you know she's not available. Everybody's not available. Okay. Even plenty single people are not available. I'm single right now and I'm not available. I'm not available because I have, I, I'm, I'm working on the four parts of me. You know, I'm my, my, my emotional health and my spiritual health. I feel like I, I, I've been doing some significant work and making a uh, significant progress in that part of my life, but now I need to um, get balanced physically and financially. You know, I, I want a whole balanced life, right? And that takes work and nobody else can do that work for me. And so I'm not out here looking for anybody and I'm not accepting applications or reviewing resumes right now because I have so much work to do on myself. I don't have time to fit somebody. I mean, unless God tapped me on the shoulder and be like, Randy, that is your husband. Um, if God doesn't speak to me, if you don't get a recommendation from the Holy Spirit, you ain't got nothing coming for me right now. But that doesn't mean that you're not attractive. That doesn't mean that, you know, if it was a better time in my life, uh, you wouldn't have a shot. It's just, you know, it's just not, not good timing right now. So just because you step to a woman and or a girl and she blows you off or says, you know, uh, thanks, but no thanks or or whatever like that, you know, keep it pushing this other women out there. It's other women out there. It's plenty of other women out there. And trust me, somebody will be single, you know, but get you need to get to know them is my point. And by talking to people, that's how you get to know somebody. You, what, through talking to them, you'll see if they're easy to get offended or they have a problem with everything, or they always getting sad about something or whatever like that. You know what I mean? Like you got to test the waters before you dip your carrot in the waters. Cause that just, it saves you so much headache and frustration. But anyway, so back to my son and his children. Um, yeah, now he is uh, he's hurting. He's hurting. My granddaughter, um, his second child, she doesn't she doesn't speak really. Um, she can read, which is phenomenal. I used to keep my grandkids and I would teach them Chinese and Spanish and English, even though they couldn't talk. Um, the brain is a, is a, is a marvelous thing. And so, uh, I still want to try, but anyway, my granddaughter, um, hadn't had her teeth brushed her whole life or well, while the mother while um, their mother has had them and she's got terrible cavities and some kind of way uh, a couple of my some of my granddaughter's teeth got ripped out of her mouth like gouged out the story that the atrocious mother Cold. It's like, but I guess the pain from the cavities was too much. And my grandbaby got a hold of like a knitting needle and went in and tried to gouge. Well, she didn't try, but gouged uh, a couple of teeth out at five years old. I have a hard time believing that. I don't know if that story is true at all. All I know is that my granddaughter is in excruciating pain. 
and her mother won't take her to the doctors because she doesn't care. She ain't got time. She got to go to work. Or any excuse. Anytime any of my grandchildren had anything wrong with them, she wouldn't even give them the medication. Because uh, she doesn't care. It was just about security for her. It was just about uh, making sure that my son would pay the bills and take care of her. So if she had these children and, um, and if she has control over the children, then he will pay for her house and he'll pay, you know, for everything for them. And, um, yeah, my son is in hell because of this. His heart is ripped in a million pieces. Um, he lost everything, everything, his children, his home, all his belongings. She has proven to be an extremely destructive force in our lives. And I don't wish that pain on any of you, you know? And when you're young, you don't realize that the problems can get that big and that they can get that deep. All you're thinking about is, ooh, she, she's beautiful. Uh, she makes my heart sing. I feel great when I'm with her. She makes me feel like a million bucks. Oh, she didn't, she never had love. I can give that to you. I'd be happy to give that to you. You better think. You better think. Think about what the repercussions could be if this is not a good person that you are getting with. Okay. Alrighty, so that's my um that's my little life lesson for you. I I just I've been seeing a lot of um a lot of uh red pill stuff out here for young men because there's a lot of you guys that are uh falling prey to women like this. And from what I've seen, like uh Andrew Tate and fresh and fit they are taking advantage of you guys they're taking advantage of you guys and they don't have any answers the answers that i've seen and i didn't watch clips i watched their show i watched listen to them say what they had to say um and they are some weak-minded men and y'all are listening to them. And that is scary. For me, I'm a woman. I don't seek advice about men from women. I go to my brother. He a man. And he'll tell me straight. Oh, no, Brandy, you can't do that. Oh, man, you messed up. No, uh-uh. This is how it got to be, or this is, uh, you know what? He said that, and he just, this, this, that, and the other. He, he, he tells me straight. He tells me about guys. He's a guy. He knows what he does, and he knows what other guys do, you know? And my brother, he puts me up on game. I don't go to women about talking about, oh, I'm looking for this kind of man. How can how can I, you know, get that kind of man? Or how should I treat this kind of man or whatever? No, I talked to a man about that. <laughs> Why would y'all listen to these guys, Andrew Tate, Fresh and Fit, guys like that, that if they were really happy, they wouldn't be so angry. I've seen a lot of little clips, you know, where they would be going off and couldn't control themselves. 
toward women. Um, and these guys, they're just really, really small minded. They're small minded. And what successful relationships do they have with females? Even if your goal, even if your goal is just to be able to have sex with as many women as you like, wouldn't you want to go back when you want to, you know, like, don't you at least want to keep the relationship open so that you're welcome? You know, you're taking advice from guys like that. You're going to burn a whole bunch of bridges and you're going to have a lot of women thinking that, that uh, you're not a good guy. So I just wanted to put something out there to you guys uh, from a woman, from a woman's perspective so that you can identify the type of chick to stay away from, okay? As long as you steer clear of the type of women that I that have traits that I put in this video, then you stand a really good chance of finding a good girl um, that's going to love you and and not abuse you, not abuse your wallet, not abuse your heart, not abuse your mind. A lot of times, good girls come from households where um, they were loved. You can come from a single family home and be loved. It's, it's always best when you have both parents, but um, there's a lot of phenomenal people out here that they take the time to fix themselves and heal themselves and then they raise children and they raise champions, you know? Um, I know my son is a champion, even though he got taken advantage of, you know, that one time you get back up again, you learn your lesson, and then you go on. You go on and you do better next time. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys something tangible, something that you could really hold on to that will help you to not feel like a simp or to not get taken advantage of. There's a lot of good girls and good women out here that they're not looking to take advantage of anybody. They just want some reciprocity. They want to be treated the way they treat you. Um, and they know what love is. Do you know what love is? Ain't good to be looking for something and you don't even know what it looked like. Anyway, <laughs> that's just my two, three, four, five cents. <laughs> All right. If you like this content, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Um, am I putting anything in the description? Oh, yes. My book. <laughs> um, Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. Yes, darling, I am an ex-lesbian, so I know a thing or three about women. <laughs> um, yes, I used to be gay um, for a long time, and then uh, I am just not anymore. <laughs> um... No, you can find out why I'm not gay anymore. If you watch any of my other videos, you know, my whole gay story is on one of these videos. I'll, you know, you can just go on my channel, find that one. Um, but anyway, I wrote a book because um, there were a lot of women when I was gay. I met so many women that they just chose that lifestyle because they could not uh, find a good man that would love them back the way that they love them. They just would come out of the relationships with men feeling really used up, you know, like, uh, they got married, they had children and it, she had to work and it was expected to take care 
of the house and the kids and um, meals and just everything, everything. And that gets real old. You know, if I'm working just as hard as you are, we both got jobs, uh, we need to split this housework. We need to split time, you know, split stuff with the kids. We need to split all of it because if not, somebody's going to get burnt out. And so I met so many women that were burnt out from being treated that way in relationships. And then when they would um, have sex with their man, they wasn't even having orgasms. Never. I met women that had never had orgasms and they had been married for years and had children and never had an orgasm. And so they just felt like there's no payoff to being with a man. You're gonna get used up. You're not gonna get loved back. And then as soon as you don't look good anymore, you know, he's gonna, his eyes are gonna start wandering. So why, why put up with that? You know, uh, I can get treated better by a woman. So when I was gay, I was like, what can I do so that my girlfriends won't leave me? Because um, I just wanted my girlfriends not to leave me. And I, just, I figured if I could become the best lover that they ever had, then I wouldn't have to worry about them leaving me. So I went on a quest <laughs> and I learned how to give any woman that I was with at least 10 orgasms. So that was my quota. I had to give my girlfriend at least 10 orgasms in the first hour of us having sex and so um you know like the first one or two was through oral and then the rest of it was through the missionary style um and penetration and it worked i had great relationships with my girlfriends we didn't argue you know we always had fun always laughing but you know i'm that kind of person i, I like to have fun i'm always you know, I'm kind of goofy and I like to have a good time and I like peace and, and you know, so I'm, I'm not high maintenance and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, my relationships were easy breezy and then the sex was off the charts. So they stayed, you know, um, I didn't have a problem in that area. So my book, The Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian is those techniques that I learned um, you know, it's really, it's really, really, really just like things that if a man wants to be able to satisfy a woman and give her orgasms easily, these are things that you should know. These are like, you know, ABCs and one, two, threes of, of every woman's body. Um, we don't, we're not all the same, but we do all have the same parts, you know? Um, and so once you, you learn that, how to turn those parts out and everything, then you know love making it just it, it just um it's just really way more satisfying you know when you know you're rocking her world it's crazy it's crazy makes a woman a lot more agreeable i'll tell you that much <laughs> um anyway uh yeah so it's an audio book the link is in the description for you to be able to download it off my Koji page. And I think that is about everything. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you check out my other videos. Uh, got some funny stories. Got some crazy stories. <laughs> um, but I hope that this helps you for real. If I if I saved you from having one of these train wrecks, then I did my job.